The Panacea to Man's Salvation First Bible Lesson, Luke 4, 18-20 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and he sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Second Bible Lesson, Matthew 28, 18-20 And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Golden Text, Mark 16, 17 and 18 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Baptism, the Armor of War Beloved, I want to use this medium to inform you clearly of what your duties here in the kingdom are. Coming in here only to sit down and fold your arms are not your expected duty here in the kingdom. Neither do they constitute the work of God. Listening to and imbibing the words of God that are preached to you here do not constitute the service expected of you here in the kingdom. The ways of God confound man a lot, and in order that the world is saved, it has pleased the Father to inform you of what your duties are in the kingdom. It is as a result of the love which God has for us and His desire that we should not perish that He has come in person into the world without sending anyone. Do not go about telling people to come into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star and accept baptism so as to be Brotherhood members. From the text above, it has been clearly spelt out that baptism constitutes the only panacea to man's salvation. Go out and tell people to accept baptism so as to free themselves from the wrath of God that is pending. In fact, the texts of this particular gospel constitute the mystery of this kingdom and these you must feed others with. An adage has it that a black goat should be sought for when it is not yet dark. The impending judgment for the entire world will be very drastic. Therefore, it is imperative that you go out and import these texts and their significance to people. Try as much as you can to get them baptized irrespective of age, sex, race, attainment, etc., Apart from those that accept baptism and put on Christ as garment, no other people will escape the wrath of God that is on the way. The scripture says that we all should put on our armor of war so that we may be able to stand the test of time. It is true that most Crusaders members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star and the inhabitants of the whole world do not know the essence of being girded with the said armor of war, the gospel. Hence, they are often defeated when it comes to war, hatred, fighting, and killing. However, with the said armor of war fully girded, you are bound to be fearless and stand firm irrespective of the situation. It is also true that God embodies all the powers that prevail in the world, and once you believe in Him and get baptized, you are equally an embodiment of the said powers. Get this message across to the inhabitants of the world at such times. Downplay preachments on topics like repentance and forgiveness. This is because it is not uncommon to see a man who has been receiving preachings on several issues still going about in search for idols that supply diverse forms of powers. This informs why you have been enjoined to go out and preach this particular gospel to all and sundry. 
If you are asked of the things that are in brotherhood of the cross and star, do not answer that there is nothing in brotherhood. For if you say this, you are a liar. After all, God cannot send you on an errand and fail to accompany you throughout the period of accomplishment of the errand. Therefore, there is power of God here in the kingdom. For having been baptized, you are indwelt by Christ and you have become His soldier. By so doing, you cannot be harmed by anything. The Armageddon war you have been hearing about is a war waged between the spirit and the flesh. For one to emerge victorious in the said war which is currently going on in the world, one needs to put on Christ by accepting baptism. It is after one might have put on Christ that one would be able to utter efficacious word and walk majestically on the earth without fear or favor. Get the world informed of this fact so that the obedient ones may know the truth and be freed just as you are freed. Be informed that it is vanity going into the waters, beneath the earth, into the sky, etc., searching for power, initiating into diverse secret societies, and acquiring all forms of degrees. Apart from baptism, which gives one the right to put on Christ, one is doomed. But once one accepts baptism and puts on Christ, one is filled and becomes whole. God knows fully well that no being or thing will escape from His wrath. Hence, He has descended His powers into the world and has shown us the prerequisite for acquiring such baptism. If you desire to be free from the wrath to come, you need to accept baptism so as to put on Christ. Therefore, it is imperative that you go out and inform people of the essence of baptism. Keep the different names you attach to your folds aside. Likewise, the doctrine and norms in them and embrace this truth so that you might emerge a victor at the end and live in peace. The Essence of Baptism The entire world now is in a standstill and confused state. For the presidents, governors, distinguished men, etc. do not know what to do for things to be streamlined, since their indulgence in idolatry, cults, vices, etc. have yielded nothing profitable. It is true that when one door is closed, another is bound to be opened. Therefore, God has opened a new door of salvation, baptism, to the entire world after realizing that the first door you all treaded is no longer useful. This informs why you have been mandated to go out and baptize the entire world in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is to this end that He said in Matthew 24, 22, Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. No matter the magnitude of sins you hitherto indulged in, once you confess, become penitent and accept baptism, you are automatically washed clean. Hence, you become a worthy child of God. This is the essence of baptism I am preaching to you. God does not desire that we perish. Hence, He charges that everybody be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Therefore, as many as are baptized and put on Christ are saved. You must have heard that there is a certain part of the Western world which its inhabitants were so troubled about the present economic and political situations in the world. Hence, they inject into their bodies hard drugs so that they might be hardened whenever they are talked to. But if you feed them with this good tiding and cause them to accept baptism, you have automatically changed them, for the water would wash them clean and streamline their affairs. You have been commissioned to go out and preach baptism to all and sundry. Do not preach to people to come to Brotherhood of the Cross and Star for salvation. Instead, tell them of the essence of baptism and make sure you get them baptized so that they may be free from the impending wrath of God. You are saved, therefore it is important you make the entire world to be saved too by preaching to them about the importance of baptism. The goings on in the world today constitute the Armageddon which had long started, and you, as one of those who God has commissioned to go and rekindle the hope of many, are equally involved as He is. This has led to one of our illustrations thus. There lived a man who had a son and sent him to the university to study law. After the son had completed his course and obtained a doctorate degree in law, he returned home. On arriving the airport, 
He embraced all who came to receive him, except his father, because according to him he appeared tattered. On reaching home, his father handed over his house to him, the lawyer, and squatted in a thatched house at the backyard. Despite all these, the son did not regard the father as anything. Unfortunately, the law of nature descended heavily on the boy. After setting up his law chamber, he stayed for complete six months without any patronage from clients. At the expiration of the six months, God sent a person who spent seven days to walk down to where the said lawyer stayed to inform him how his ill treatment to the father has provoked God. He was further warned that if after another six months he still failed to reconcile with his father, he would die. God also enjoined the messenger that should he fail to deliver the said message accordingly, he too would die. But for fear of the condition given, the messenger would not have delivered the message. Since he did not want to die, he woke up and decided to take the long journey in order to deliver the message. The messenger, on seeing the lawyer, revealed to him his problem with the father, and thereafter delivered God's message to him. Consequent on this, the son became penitent and got reconciled immediately with his father. A great merrymaking followed the said reconciliation, which lasted till one o'clock that night. Then the following morning, his chamber was filled with people with different cases for the lawyer to solve. Have you now seen how God is? Before then, the man, the lawyer, used to sleep till ten o'clock in the morning as he was without any case to attend to. However, after the reconciliation, his chamber was always crowded with clients who went there with diverse briefs. That was how things started to change for the said lawyer. Unlike the young lawyer, those who are sent by God to go and make the inhabitants of the world his disciples are duty-bound not to relent, but to penetrate as far as they could, for once they relent, they will be punished. This information is for your own interest and the interest of the whole world that this is the only avenue through which God wants to salvage the entire world. Your coming in here without going into the vineyard avails you and the entire world nothing. It is this refusal that generates the problems which most members of brotherhood encounter today, as most people prefer their personal businesses to the divine commissioning which God has set before them. Do you think that there is any business as profitable as the divine commissioning? No matter your attainment in life, should you fail to enter into the vineyard of God, you are empty. Therefore, entering the vineyard and baptizing people constitute the only key to the world's salvation. Similarly, your refusal to do these things automatically renders the entire world doomed. Be serious with your responsibility. Most Brotherhood members have been shunning this divine mandate, Hence, many souls are perishing. But should everybody engage actively in revealing this truth to the world, they will be saved and freed along with you. Each member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the cause of the problems he or she encounters. Recall what befell Jonah for refusing to act according to God's directives. See Jonah 1, 1-17. You may be annoyed with the man, but not with God because none can withstand the repercussion of such unwholesome act. Whoever is called in here should not joke with the works assigned to him, for once he does this, he is invariably inviting the wrath of God upon him and even the entire world. Sing the spiritual chorus that goes thus. The voice of God came to Jonah and commissioned him to go and engage in God's services so that the world might be saved. Sing the said song again using Brotherhood of the Cross and Star in place of Jonah. When God wanted to liberate the Israelites from the bondage of Pharaoh, certain things happened. For instance, Moses, whom he used to accomplish the task, lived in Egypt for forty years, and thereafter fled from there, sequel to the person he mistakenly killed. He stayed at the place he fled to for another forty years before God finally commissioned him to go and inform Pharaoh to free his children. God did not stop at this message. He promptly informed Moses that he, God, would harden Pharaoh's heart. Now the question is, if Moses did not hearken to the voice of God, but rather went about his personal businesses, 
what do you think would have happened to the Israelites? This story seeks to inform us of the fact that God has a particular person for a particular assignment. You often receive reward for your reactions to God's injunctions to you. God also commissioned John the Baptist to go out and preach repentance to the Israelites, and further told him that he would, throughout his advent, live in the wilderness, not eating, drinking, putting on clothes, or indulging in any form of materialism. Now the question is, if John the Baptist had opposed this divine order, what would have become of the world? If John the Baptist had taken delight in beautiful women, flesh-eating, gorgeous dressing, etc., and ipso facto shunned the assignment God gave him, what would have become of the world? John's assignment was to pave way for Christ's recognition. At the fullness of time, he sent Christ to come and salvage the world, and he, Christ, came in and accomplished same, remarkably. Now the question is, if Christ came and relented in the tasks the Father set before him, what would have become of the world today? God sends one person at a time for a particular task to be accomplished. Is there any way the names of the people who kept strictly to God's order to be erased and or forgotten about? Now, what has Brotherhood of the Cross and Star members done after they have been commissioned by God to go and make the inhabitants of the world His disciples? Having done nothing, in what way do you think your name would remain green in the minds of men? Your refusal to comply with the divine commissioning could only lead to the perdition of the whole world. And if the world perishes, you alone cannot be saved. Do you not know that all those called into the kingdom were to come and reveal brotherhood to the entire world? This must we all do, for our salvation depends on this. If the entire world receives salvation and comes into the kingdom only to see the old members still indulging in flesh-eating, what effect do you think that would have on them? Many people prefer their personal businesses to God's services. But the question is, ever since you started piling this money, what tangible thing have you used it for? It is to this end that I, with tears, beg you to reverse your thoughts and embrace God's services diligently. The material things of this world cannot fetch you anything good. This explains the reason why most businesses are being ruined and the money invested in them wasted. All these things are caused by your, brotherhood members, failure to take up the mandate which God has given you as quoted in the second lesson. We have barely six years left for this century to end. But the question is, what do you think will become of you and the entire world after the six years? Why not stop being hardened and go into His vineyard and do what He commissions you to do? Why not get into the vineyard and order all the people you see, irrespective of age, sex, attainment, etc., to repent and accept baptism so as to be saved. Aside from this, no money, man, material acquisition can save any man. Be informed that God is the only one that sends a person on an errand and goes along to accomplish the same errand and take the glory to Himself. Do not let anything cause you to overemphasize this divine commissioning. Once you take up this mandate which God has given you, you will not fail to perceive the power of God in you and in the entire world at large. Do not forget to call all the acclaimed born-again group and feed them with this truth, so that they too may be freed as you have been. While feeding them with this truth, make sure you do not force them to accept it. Instead, leave all the recalcitrant ones to their ways, for at the fullness of time they shall receive their due reward. In fact, everybody has seen this truth, but the thought of what to eat, wear, and drink has caused them to shun the truth. Do you not know that this is a very difficult time? Do you know what will become of this world and its inhabitants in the near future? Do you desire that your parents, relations, city, and the entire world at large to perish? If you do not desire this doom, then seek for the black goat when it is not yet dark by going out into every nook and cranny of the world to advise people to purge sinfulness and accept baptism and put on Christ as a garment so as to be free. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, by virtue of everything, was baptized. He never went back to carpentry work again. He knew what he came to accomplish in the world and what it entailed to accomplish such task. He did away with every material comfort and clung unto God's services. If he had joked with the said mandate, the entire world would have perished along with him. During his trial and crucifixion, if he had fled as Pilate advised him, he would not have been saved along with the entire world. The mandate given to you is from God, and it has its reward. How much do you think your business can fetch you, compared with the blessings derivable from taking up this mandate? What would you lose as you go out to save the entire world, the lost sheep of God? Sing the song which is interpreted from Igbo language to mean, Olumba has come, therefore it behooves us to go out and tell people of His coming. Judgment is imminent. Recall that my judgment instruments, which I showed you in 1974, are still available, and I should have started judgment long ago. But for some reasons, most Brotherhood of the Cross and Star members are unbelievers. When judgment starts, it will affect everybody. It is now 20 years since these instruments were shown to Brotherhood members. But what preparation have you put in place? What do you think would happen if judgment starts tomorrow? The angels in charge of judgment were long ready to commence their work. But whenever I look at you, with much pity, I delay the commencement of such activity. If I should hand you over to the angels today for judgment, you would realize the consequence of disobedience. Hence, I tell you always to get into the vineyard, yet you refuse. Do you think that one servant can serve two masters? If the war were not tough, the Lord would not have come by Himself. Now that He has come personally to wage the war, He desires you all to obey Him and keep to His sane, so that salvation may not elude you, your parents, friends, relations, city, and nation at large. It is said that a wise man sees a thing afar and takes precaution, but a foolish man waits until such a thing gets to him. Now that you have been shown the prerequisites for salvation, you do not want to hold on to same. Instead, you are still hardened till salvation eludes you. It is true that of all the cities and inhabitants created by God, Biakpan and its inhabitants are the most stubborn and doubtful place. But today, they have experienced a lot. Hence, they are now sober and enthusiastic on what the Holy Spirit says. Brother, Oodike once testified of how the Igbos attempted to trespass into a portion of Biakpan land. They could not do so, and as such, are always testifying of the power of the Father and attribute their failure to the Father's power. Some people have known this truth. You are duty-bound to go out and tell the people of the light you have seen, and while you are telling people this truth, you are also expected to disentangle from all forms of sinfulness, for those you preached to are always looking out to see if you could practice what you preach, show good example. Should they realize that you do not show good example, they too would, on no account, adhere to your preachment. God is here on earth. He desires no form of idolatry, war, flesh-eating, or any sinful act. Should you keep to His desires, you are filled and are bound to have no problems whatsoever in life. In spite of this, however, all that interests you is materialism and immorality. The question is, who among those who indulged in these acts was spared in the generations of Noah and Lot? All evildoers, except Noah and Lot respectively, were destroyed. Therefore, it is a misconception that you would be spared should you refuse to enter into the vineyard and shun materialism and sinfulness. You have been commissioned to go out and make the inhabitants of the world God's disciples. But the question is, how will you be able to convince people to shun flesh-eating, immorality, segregation, etc., when you are still indulging in these things? This alone depicts that nobody here in the kingdom is serious about this task, and it is out of your unseriousness that you, your parents, friends, relations, city, etc., have perished today. But for the word of God, nobody could withstand the famine, war, etc., that are currently going on in the world today. Since you have starved people of the word of God, 
how do you expect them to survive these problems? God has made no mistake manifesting Himself as a black man. Should you read one of our pamphlets titled, Jehovah God in Human Form, you will realize that we all are God's elects and cannot flee from this right. Today, you have gone about preaching to people that Alumba has come in person without sending anyone, instead of preaching that God has come. Have you now realized that you are confusing people? So in order to know what to preach to people, read the first lesson again. First Bible Lesson, Luke 4, 18-20 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Represent the Father the entire world bears testimony to the good works of the Father and His deity. However, He has observed that your behaviors and deeds contradict His teachings. This has been the reason why people still delay to come into the kingdom. This has also debarred you from going out to preach to people, because you feel ashamed to preach the things you still indulge in. This is where the problem rests. According to the first lesson above, the Spirit of Jehovah has descended upon you, and ipso facto you are expected to go out and preach to people to purge all forms of sinfulness, and these too must you purge. Now, if you preach to people to purge idolatry and not to believe in the existence of voodoo, but thereafter you go to them and request for one charm or the other, how do you think these people would regard you? Do you think they would adhere to your teachings while you go about violating such teachings? The entire world is watching us and trying to compare what we practice with what we preach so as to see if they too are parallel to each other so that they can emulate us. If their findings prove that you are only preaching without practicing, what do you think will be the outcome of your teaching? The Enyal of Abba, Apostle Ikone, for instance, was before now dreaded by people following his difficult ways of life. But now, the teaching he has received from here has changed him and made him very enjoyable to be with people. Hence, people are very free with him these days. Right from April 1987, when he came into this kingdom, he has never medicated till now. This he has vowed not to do, so that the onlookers may know that he is worshipping the real God. It is as a result of this lifestyle that distinguished people have embraced the kingdom. Is there any other people who is prepared to do exactly what the said brother has done? None is prepared, because you do segregate, hate, and quarrel even before me. Note that it is pertinent you purge all the things which the Father enjoins you to purge, and also go out and preach same to people, so that the world may not perish. Do you not know that the brotherhood members are the ones to judge the entire world and the angels? If you attempt to judge any church today, you would be driven away and would be said to be the architect of all the problems that go on in the world today. This is as a result of your fail to shun sins. Aside from brotherhood, the government cannot put in place any fruitful judgment. For instance, when Ebim and Oafia had a clash, the Presbyterian Church interceded as to reconcile them, but the people drove them away with the excuse that they were the cause of the problems. The two communities only demanded that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star should come to their rescue. Always keep yourself free and pure, for you have a lot of assignments to accomplish here in the kingdom. If you go to London now, you can penetrate any way and change anybody to the Father, provided you are pure. This is the greatest work here on earth, and it is your responsibility to make sure it is accomplished as soon as possible in every part of the world. Read the second lesson again. Second Bible Lesson, Matthew 28, 18-20 And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost 
teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The Eternal Assignment Have you now seen the eternal assignment which God has kept before you to accomplish? This assignment should you do, for He is always with you and shall continue to be till the end of time. The Crusaders do still lack a common purse, whereas there are some of them who have many store buildings, cars, but you do not give any to those who have none. Do you know that by doing this you are deceiving yourselves? During the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, He and the disciples had just a common purse, but no brotherhood member is ready to carry on this divine order following the fact that they are egocentric and miserly. There is no group seen to have started this oneness, except the people of Oran who started theirs of recent. But note that you cannot deceive God. Rather, you can only succeed in deceiving yourself. All the powers in heaven and on earth belonging to Christ. In fact, He is the embodiment of all powers, and once you accept baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are automatically filled with the said power. It is to this end you have been mandated to go out and make all nations God's disciples by baptizing them and teaching them to observe all the teachings of Christ. Once you are baptized and put on Christ, you have become one with Him, and you should, of a necessity, be guided by this teaching. This is how to keep the entire world one. For you to realize the essence of baptism, read the Golden Text again. Golden Text, Mark 16, 17, and 18 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The Mystery of This Kingdom Beloved, what you have just read constitutes the things that are in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Whenever you are asked by anybody the things that are in Brotherhood, refer the one to the text above. Explain to them the efficacy of the above text, and they will ask you to get them baptized. In fact, there is nobody in the world who does not desire such opportunity or privilege in life. Have you now realized that these are the things that are in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? This has been the cause of many testimonies here in the kingdom. Everybody seeks for peace and grace of God. But who is ready to go out and reveal to people the source of peace and grace? There are great sufferings, famine, frustration, chaos, etc. going on in the world today. Sequel to the fact that Brotherhood members are not ready to go out and reveal this truth to people. After all, baptism unlocks all that were hitherto locked and changes every bad situation. I know that most Brotherhood members have been eluded of this fact. This explains why I am imparting this sermon to you now. There are many churches in the world, but none is capable of praying for people to receive their desires. This is because they have not been correctly baptized and truly have not put on Christ. Immediately one puts on Christ after being baptized, one can speak efficaciously. Always endeavor to tell people that the things in the golden text are fulfilled in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, else you are a liar to tell them that there is nothing in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Else you are a liar to tell them that there is nothing in Brotherhood. Why then could you offer efficacious prayers whereas they cannot? Tell people that Christ embodies all the powers in heaven and on earth. As such, should they accept baptism and thus put on Christ, they are filled, become whole, satisfied, and have no need for charms, etc. This must you inform the whole world, for it constitutes your indebtedness to the world. Make sure you redeem this debt in your life, so as to be freed and worthy of God. Should you fail to clear this debt, then you are not helping God to make His will manifest. Have you not realized the signs that are to follow those who believe in God, as quoted in our golden text? Most Brotherhood members, as a result of being defiled, disobedient, and stubborn, have no power. Hence, they still go about medicating, segregating, and committing one form of sin or the other. 
This informs why I always tell you to ever remain pure after baptism and not to violate any of the teachings of the Father to you, so that you might be able to stand the taste of time. It is said that a stroke of Cain is enough for the wise. Let those who have ears hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the entire world. May God bless His holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu Compiled by George Morales Came to